a very warm welcome to our service of choral evensong here this evening at Canterbury Cathedral, both to those of you with us here in the building and those of you who join us online. Our life at the cathedral is shaped by the rhythm of prayer. We pray for our community, for the church, for the world and for one another. So it is lovely to welcome you all to be part of that rhythm today as we continue to celebrate in these weeks of Easter the resurrection and the hope that comes in the life of Jesus. During our holiday time, when our own choristers are having a break, we welcome choirs from all around uh, the world, actually, to come and sing Evensong for us. And this evening, I am delighted that we have Kent College choristers. You won't all be able to see them because they're a little bit shorter than some of our more adult choristers, but it's wonderful to have you with us this evening. Some of them are singing here for the very first time. For some of them, they are seasoned old hands already. But we are delighted that you're here, and it's lovely also to welcome your parents and grandparents who've come to hear you sing as we share in this service of prayer this evening. So we settle our hearts and we remember that we gather on holy ground as we bring ourselves and the needs of our world to God in this act of prayer. choir sing the appointed psalm, Psalm 53. Please be seated.
third chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, from the 18th verse. As the children of Israel prepare to enter the promised land, Moses is addressing them and reminding them of some of what they have been through in the wilderness. Moses said, At that time I charged you as follows. Although the Lord your God has given you this land to occupy, all your troops shall cross over armed as the vanguard of your Israelite kin. Only your wives, your children, and your livestock, I know that you have much livestock, shall stay behind in the towns that I have given you. When the Lord gives rest to your kindred as to you, and they have occupied the land that the Lord your God is giving them beyond the Jordan, then each of you may return to the property that I have given you. And I charged Joshua as well at that time, saying, Your own eyes have seen everything that the Lord your God has done to the two kings you have conquered. So the Lord will do to all the kingdoms into which you are about to cross. Do not fear them, for it is the Lord your God who fights for you. At that time too, I entreated the Lord, saying, O Lord God, you have only begun to show your servant your greatness and your might. What God in heaven or on earth can perform deeds and mighty acts like yours? Let me cross over to see the good land beyond the Jordan, that good hill country and the Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not heed me. The Lord said to me, Enough from you. Never speak to me of this matter again. Go up to the top of Pisgah and look around you to the west, to the north, to the south, and to the east. Look well, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. But charge Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, because it is he who shall cross over at the head of this people, and who shall secure their possession of the land that you will see. So we remained in the valley opposite Beth Peor. Here ends the first reading.
The second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, beginning at the 19th verse, as we continue the story of that first Easter Sunday. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Here ends the second reading. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
choir sings the anthem, Sing Together Salite, the music by Johann Sebastian Bach, arranged by Patrick Liebergen. Let us pray. In this Easter season, we rejoice in our Lord's resurrection from the dead and in his victory over sin, darkness, and the grave. And we pray for the life of the church within the worldwide Anglican communion for Archbishop Justin and in our cycle of prayer for the Diocese of Dhaka, in the Autonomous Church of Bangladesh for its bishops, clergy, and people. In our own diocese for Rose, Bishop of Dover, today for all those who minister in the Elam Deanery, that they may be blessed with resilience and joy in their ministry. For Carol Baines, as she prepares for office as the new rector of Elam. We pray, too, for the continuing life, ministry, and faithfulness of this Cathedral Church of Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, who formed your church to be of one heart and one soul in the power of the resurrection and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, renew her evermore in her first love and grant such a measure thereof to all your people that our life may be hallowed, our way directed, and our work made fruitful, to the good of your church and the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for universal peace and justice in the Middle East, in Ukraine, in the Sudan, and wherever people suffer conflict or deprivation. And let us pray for the hastening of that day when all may live confidently, with dignity, and free from want or fear. Almighty God, guide, we beseech thee, the nations of the world into the ways of justice, peace, and truth. Establish among them that fraternity which is the fruit of righteousness, and grant that in every land thy kingdom may come, thy will be done, and thy glory be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in the silence of this holy place, sanctified by centuries of worship and prayer, 
We pray for all pilgrims to this place. And today we remember before God those whose earthly pilgrimage is ended, all whom we love but see no more, whose hope and faith were in the risen Christ. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, who has given us an abiding citizenship in heaven, and in the days of our pilgrimage, a citizenship also upon earth. Give us thine aid as we journey towards that heavenly city, so faithfully to perform the duties which befall us on our way, that at the end we may enter into the joy of thine everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us pray for all nations and peoples as we say together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. As you leave the cathedral this afternoon, our stewards will be holding baskets to receive any donations. And there's also an electronic donation point near the door as you leave. And we ask you to be as generous as you can in your donation, as our music mission and care of this cathedral costs some £30,000 each and every day. Our gratitude and thanks for your support. And so now, from the Red Hymn Book, we stand to sing the hymn 222. <laughs> 